Hello and welcome back to Selenium Training. In this video tutorial, we will be looking at Selenium ID commands in a very detailed way. These are the topics we are going to cover. We will be looking at different Selenium ID commands, commands to input data to AUT. AUT means application under test which is your website or web application. We will look at different input commands like type, check, select like that then retrieve data from application like we have different store commands provided by selenium ide then we look at different wait commands to wait for application events like a pop-up to come up or an element to present like that then we have assert or verify commands to verify website behavior or its state or its properties like that these four sets of commands are really important and they are very core set of commands for any application. Then we'll be looking into printing to logs. We have an echo command that can be used. Then finally capturing the screenshots. Before proceeding further, let's discuss why are we going in depth. Because in real world, we will be using Selenium web driver and it's all Selenium web driver commands. But why are we learning Selenium ID commands and going in depth? This is because to cover Selenium IDE real world use cases. There are a number of real world use cases and that's how you should be using Selenium IDE in real world. First one is to record your test cases and export in Java or C Sharp. You can record your user actions and then export the test, then get it to your development environment and enhance it further. I'm not saying that when you record in Selenium IDE and export, your test case is fully automated, but you have the code for the user actions and most of the code is ready. You can then enhance add verification steps or if conditions, loops and make it fully automated. Then you can make it a function or a module and call it from other places. The next one is building or debugging locating strategies. Say you are working with Selenium web driver and at a statement you have issue with locating strategy. Then you can use Selenium IDE to find out what's the locating strategy or to debug the issues with locating strategy. You don't want to run the Selenium web driver script every time up to that statement to find out or to debug the locating strategy. The next one is to quickly build the test cases when you don't have time to fully automate. For example, you are close to release and you don't have time to automate few test cases. Then you can use Selenium IDE to quickly automate those and once the release is done then you can use selenium web driver for complete automation the final one is it helps you in terms of learning selenium web driver it sets the base for you when you go to selenium web driver now you are a kind of familiar with the concepts and you can concentrate more on technical or programming part it sets the base for selenium web driver learning considering all above cases it makes you very productive in terms of quickly recording your test case and having the code for user actions or building or debugging locating strategies or learning web driver. It makes you very productive. Let's look at Selenium ID commands. Selenium ID provides a vast number of commands. It provides a lot of commands to work with your web application. You can go to the command field drop down and look at all different commands. It's just clicking on the drop down, then you can see all different commands in the alphabetical order. Then we also have the reference tab which provides the information. Once a command is selected, you can go to reference tab and there you can see what's the command, what all arguments it's taking and how the arguments work and more information on the command. It's a really helpful tab. I have Firefox and Selenium IDE open. Let's go through all different commands. I'm clicking on command drop down and you can see the first command is add location strategy where you can add your own custom location strategy. Then you can add a JavaScript to Selenium IDE. Then we have few commands to deal with the alert key, alert key button. Then going further, we have a number of assert commands. You can assert an alert whether the alert is present or not you can assert attribute which is really important you can assert the attribute of an element then we have 
a number of assert commands assert element present to verify whether element is present or not going further we have capture entire page screenshot that is used to capture the entire page screenshot then we have check command this is for the check boxes you can check a check box using this command then we have click click and wait which we have already seen then click at where you can click at a specific coordinate going further we have a number of commands to deal with the context menu then a number of commands to deal with the cookies then we have a number of commands to deal with the drag and drop this is mainly to let you know that what all different commands we have in selenium id there are a vast number of commands are there some of them you will be using some of them you won't be using it depends upon your web application and your context then we have echo command which is used to print the information to the log going further we have few commands to deal with the mouse mouse down mouse down at then we have few select commands this select command this is used to select from the drop down then we have select frame select pop up select window they are mainly to switch to that object you can select a frame then switch to the frame and do the actions in the frame you can select a pop up or window then direct all your actions in that pop up or window select window is useful whenever you have multiple windows you can use select window then switch to whatever window you want and perform your actions it's select window then writing the title of the window then you can send all actions into that window we have send keys which is similar to type but it is more like simulating from the keyboard going further we have a number of store commands they are mainly to retrieve the information from application store alert store attribute which is important store attribute is nothing but you can go to a specific element and you can get the specific attribute value which is really useful then we have store element present you can check whether element present or not there are a lot of store commands after that we have type which we have already seen uncheck this is used for check boxes you can set its state to uncheck then we have a number of verify commands i think for every asset command there is an equivalent verify command verify attribute verify body text the whole body text of the web page you can verify cookies verify confirmation this is to deal with the javascript pop ups after that we have a lot of wait for commands this is mainly to wait for events in the application you can wait for an alert or you can wait for an alert not present you can wait for attribute this is waiting for specific attribute value on a element then we have wait for element present to wait for a element to be present on the application going further there are a number of wait commands wait for pop up wait for prompt then finally we have few commands to deal with the windows window focus to give a focus on window then window maximize to maximize the window these all are different types of commands and we will be going through the important ones selenium id provides a number of commands to input data to your web application or website we have already seen few commands we have seen type select click now we'll be seeing other commands like send keys check uncheck and submit one thing to remember for all these input commands we have unwait version to handle any page loading after input action for example say you are clicking on a button after that it's going to a new page or you are clicking on submit and after that it's going to a new page for all these actions we have unwait version to handle the page loading let's look at some of the input commands i'm going to slide share website then let's go to login page 
here we have a checkbox let's look at check and uncheck first it is already checked so I'm going to use uncheck command I'm selecting a new command then I'm saying uncheck then you can specify the target here let me inspect that element with firebug inspect the checkbox you can see here it's a input with ID remember so I can say uncheck ID equal to remember if I click on find it's matching to the checkbox if I run this command you can see it has unchecked the checkbox now again I can use the check version I'm saying here check ID equal to remember now it's going to go to the checkbox and set its state to check if I run this one you can see here the element is checked now next look at submit command command submit submit command is useful to simulate submit action on the forms this is particularly useful when you have forms without submit commands you can see here example single input search forms as mentioned earlier reference tab is very useful you can see the command the arguments it's taking and how they work I'm saying submit then let me find the target of the form let me go to the form I think this is the form you can see form ID login form so I can say here submit on target ID equal to login form if I click on find it's matching to the form if I run submit command because we haven't entered any username or password it should give a error I'm double clicking to run the submit command it is doing something okay it has perform submit action but you can see it says incorrect username or password that's how submit command works it's really useful when you have a form without submit button the next one is send case this is similar to type but more like you are simulating from the keyboard I can say send case and you can give a target and a value let me inspect username field its ID is user login I can say target ID equal to user login and value abisoft sorry bakshu underscore abisoft now if I click on send case it's going to type username in the username field I'm double clicking on it you can see it has typed the username let's look at store commands selenium ID provides a variety of store commands like store text you can use this command to store the text displayed or present on an element then we have store attribute that is used to store specific attribute value then finally we have store element present which stores true or false based on element present or not any store command it stores the value in a variable once the value is stored in a variable you can reuse later for comparison say in assert commands or verify commands or you can do further processing selenium ID also provides different weight commands some of the weight commands are here first one is wait for text we have already seen this as part of slide share test cases using wait for text command you can wait for specific text to appear and it's specific to a element or locating strategy then we have wait for element present you can wait for specific element to present in the web page and wait for attribute this is really useful you can wait for specific attribute value you can just say wait for this is the attribute value and it's going to wait until the attribute is going to attain that value let's see how store commands work I'm creating a new test case then let's look with this button it looks like a button or a link login with Facebook I'm inspecting that element it's a anchor tag it has got a ID and there is class if I expand that there is text login with Facebook let's try to get this text what I can say here is I can say store text and target target is 
we can use link text let's use ID ID is available I can say target ID equal to FP login and here we need to give a variable I can say FP text now it's going to go to the element and get whatever text within the element in the FP text here is the syntax and we are following the syntax it says store text the locator and the variable name store text the locator which is ID equal to FP login and the variable name is FP text once you have the value in variable you can retrieve it or you can use it for further processing for example if we want to print it out you can say echo we are using echo command here and here you can give the variable if you just give the variable name like this it's not going to work it's going to consider this as a string and just print the plain string as FP text let's see here I'm clicking on store text it's executed then I'm clicking on FP text which is also executed if you see in the logs you can see that store text executed then executing echo FP text it has just said FP text because we have just given it as a string you should give it as a variable the syntax is you should give dollar symbol then the variable name in curly brackets this is the syntax it starts with the dollar symbol and then variable name in curly brackets if I execute this command again go to logs you can see now it has given echo login with Facebook whatever text displayed here login with Facebook it has given the text the next command is store attribute I can say store attribute and I can take a attribute from this Facebook login button and I can print that out let's go with class attribute because this is a Facebook login button and the display is really important the way it looks let's say we want to print out the value of the class attribute I can say store attribute and its ID is FP login once you specify the target you also need to specify its attribute what attribute you are looking for the syntax is you need to give the target after that you need to give at symbol then whatever attribute you want then class we are exactly following the syntax it says the locator strategy then at symbol after that we need to give the attribute the same thing we have done the locating strategy then at symbol the attribute is class so we have given class and the variable name let's say FP class let's print this out you can say echo and the variable syntax dollar symbol then within curly brackets let's give FP class you can also give string here you can say FP class colon space then it's going to print out FP class and whatever the value of the class let me run the store command okay it's executed let me run the echo command okay it's executed let's check the logs you can see that echo then Facebook class that's the string we have given then the class value coming from the variable and you can see it's matching to the value here button button lodge it's matching to the value actually mentioned in the attribute the next one is store element present you can just say store element present and you can give whatever element you want let's say ID equal to FP login and you can give a variable name let's say FP present now you can print that out echo then the variable format FP present store element it's going to give true or false based on element present or not let me execute that then execute echo command 
because the element is present it should give true now you can see executing store element present then echo equal to true if I give a element with wrong ID I'm giving FB login 11 the element is not there if I run store command then again run echo command it should give false now you can see echo equal to false it has executed store command with ID FB login 11 there is no element like that and we have echo equal to false let's see once we have a value in a variable how we can use that in verify or assert commands I'm going to use store title command I'm saying store title and here you just need to give the variable name there is no need of locator store title in a variable called title then it's going to store the value then once the value is there in a variable you can use that in a assert command or verify command now I'm using a verify command verify title and in the targets it's a pattern it's a value to verify with so the value is in title variable so I'm saying here title variable so here we are storing the title in title variable then we are verifying the title with whatever value in the title variable if I run store title it's executed if I run verify title you can see it's in dark green and it's also passed if you see the logs it seems both are fine this is how you can store a value in a variable and you can use in verify or assert commands few important things to note here remember the syntax when you use attribute commands its locating strategy and after that at symbol then the attribute name remember the syntax to access a variable its dollar symbol and within curly brackets you need to give the variable name let's look at wait commands we have already seen wait for text let's look at wait for attribute I'm going to look at login button for example say here in the login button HTML code you can see there are different attributes ID class type value name let's say there is some action or some operation which is going to change the value it's going to change the value to login to slide share and after that we want to have a wait command to wait for the text to appear what we can say here is wait for attribute and attribute of what element a element with ID equal to login form landing page that's the ID of the login button I can say ID equal to login form landing page then we want the attribute at the attribute is value and what's the value we are waiting for we are waiting for login to slide share so in this command we are saying wait for attribute and wait for value attribute on login button to become login to slide share let me refresh the screen okay now the page is refreshed I'm going to login button let me execute now the values are different let me execute how wait for attribute works is it's going to wait for the attribute value to change for 30 seconds the timeout is defined in the options timeout variable it will wait for 30 seconds and within 30 seconds if the value is changing then it will pass and proceed to next step if the value is not changing then it's going to fail it's in yellow color that means it's executing I hope we are very close to 30 seconds timeout period it should be failing now you can see it has turned to red color it has failed let me execute again and this time change the value to login to slide share let me copy this value I'm executing this again you can see now it's in yellow color I'm changing the value to login to login slide share and immediately it's going to pass have changed and you can see immediately it has changed to green color light green color and it has passed 
this is how wait for attribute works and in the same way we have wait for element present which is going to look for an element and if the element is present within 30 seconds it's going to pass and proceed to next step otherwise it's going to fail. Now let's see how to use assert commands and verify commands. Choosing between assert and verify commands depends upon how you want to manage your failures. For example say there is a failure what do you want to do whether you want to stop the test or proceed with the test. First let's see how these commands work. On assert command failure it will fail the test and about the current test case execution. On verify command failure it will fail the test but it continues to run rest of the test case. This is how assert and verify commands work. Let's see when to use assert commands and when to use verify commands. Use assert commands to make sure your test case is going in right direction. For example to make sure that right user configuration is loaded or correct page is loaded. For that purpose to make sure that your test is going in the right direction use assert commands. Use verify commands to actually compare test results or output values. For example say you are on a wrong page then whatever verifications you do everything is going to fail. If you use the assert command to make sure that you are on the right page then it's going to immediately fail on wrong page then you can immediately go and see the results. It's going to save a lot of time. Going further the best use of these commands is to logically group your test commands and start each group with an assert command to make sure that you are in the right page or right direction. Then use one or more verify test commands for actual test verifications or comparisons. Here is a real world example. Make sure you are on the right page with assert command and for actual test comparisons use one or more verify commands. With this if you are on wrong page it's going to fail immediately and you can see the results immediately. It's going to save time for you. As we have already seen earlier Selenium ID provides different assert commands and verify commands. Here are some of the examples. I think for each assert command there is an equivalent verify command. We have assert title that you can use to assert the title of the current page. Then we have assert attribute that you can use to assert the attribute of an element. Then we have assert element present that you can use to check whether an element present or not. We have the same commands in the verify as well. They work in the same way but whenever a verify command failed it's going to fail the test case and proceed with the rest of the test. But whenever a assert command is failed it's going to fail the test and stop the current test execution. Let's see assert and verify commands in action. I'm creating a new test case. Let's go back to our Yahoo UK search. What I want to do is I'm going to Yahoo page then I want to search for selenium keyword. Once we are on search results page this is the Yahoo logo. This seems to be important so let's check that this element is present. Then this is the search box. Let's check that its value and some of its attributes. I'm first going to record. I'm going in recording mode. Let's go to Yahoo UK site. Then let's enter selenium. Then let's click on search button. Now let's stop the recording. Let me correct the steps here. Open the Yahoo page. We don't want to click anywhere. This is typing in the search box but its ID is dynamic. Let me go through list of locating strategies recognized by selenium IDE. I can use name equal to p that's good then I don't want to click on it again then click on search button search submit which is clicking on search button. Now we have done the search action we will be on search results page. First thing we want to make sure that we are on the right page we are on the search results page then we can do all the verifications. I can use assert title if I right click you can see we have assert title command. I can use assert title to make sure that I am on the right page. I am on the search results page. Let's click on it. Okay it has inserted assert title. After that I want to check that this logo is present. This is the actual test verification so I can use verify command. Right click on it and say 
verify element present id equal to logo i can use this if i click on find it's finding the yahoo logo that's great next one is i want to verify that its value is selenium if i right click there is a command called verify value i can use this to make sure that its value is selenium let's verify other attributes if i click on inspect element with firebug it's a input tag it has got other attributes as well class type tab index autocomplete let's say we want to check autocomplete is off i can say verify autocomplete is off let's write the step verify attribute then what's the target this is the id so i can use that id this is the id then we need to give the attribute we want so at symbol then the attribute name autocomplete then the value what value you want to verify with it should be off now it looks complete we are opening the yahoo uk page then we are entering selenium in the search box we are clicking on the search button then we are using asset command to verify the title to make sure that we are on the right page then we are doing a number of verification steps let's run this test case i'm running this hopefully it should pass okay it has done the search then asset title is passed all the verifications are passed the test case is passed let's fail asset title and see what happens i'm intentionally giving one one to fail asset command let's run this time asset title is going to fail now you can see that asset title has failed and it has not continued with rest of the test here you can see runs one failures one let me change it back and this time i'm going to fail a verify command let's fail this one the first verify command id equal to logo 11 now this step is going to fail let me run the test it has opened yahoo uk site it's going to search for selenium asset command is going to pass the first verify command is going to fail you can see here that the asset command passed the first verify command verify element present for this yahoo logo it's failed but it has continued with rest of the steps this is how assert and verify commands work you can see when a verify command is failed it's also failing the test case failures one now let's look at capturing screenshots we have already seen echo command i'm going to create a new command there is a command called capture entire page screenshot that can be used to capture entire page screenshot let's write the command capture this is the command capture entire page screenshot and here in target you can give the file path there are few things to note here let's go to reference and let's look at this you can see that no file extension will be appended by default it saves as png file but by default it won't give any extension you can just add .png in the path to make sure that it's going to save as .png extension one more thing is directories will not be created if they do not exist and an exception will be thrown you have to make sure that the path you are giving is valid if there are some directories which don't exist it won't create it gives an exception let's give a file path i'm opening explorer I'm going to temp where I'm just storing all temp files. This is the path. I can get that path in Selenium IDE. Target give the path and let's say we want file name as ys1.png. ys1 stands for Yahoo search one and I'm giving .png extension because it won't give the extension by default. If I run this command it's going to save the screenshot i'm double clicking on it okay it has turned light green that means it's executed i can go to my temp folder you can see i have a ys1.png file i'm opening the file 
let me get it to actual size you can see it has got yahoo search results screenshot it is from beginning of the page we have got a number of search results and up to end of the page you can see search results pages here this is how capture entire page screenshot command works with this we have seen different selenium id commands hope this is going to be really helpful to you